Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 95. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitters in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, we're about to get into talking about independent pro wrestling. Myself, I'm a video producer here in the area uh, with some uh, promotions, including the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance of documentaries, including the fantastic and chart-topping, I'm sure, somewhere in some country, uh, Legend of Virgil and his uh, traveling merchandise table. Uh, yes, that's the one we're proud of. Uh, but anyways, with me, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, currently in San Antonio, Texas, which I learned about on this week's Breaking Ground on WWE Network, by the way. Um, I hear you <laughs> have bats, if I recall. Uh, Eamon Payton, at Eamon2, please, on the Twitter. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Yes, Sorg. Uh, bats are a big thing down here. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, once again, very happy to be back on here talking about indie wrestling as always. All right. And of course, uh, we'll get into our guests here in a moment. But first, please go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and other shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and other places as well. And you can drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0 or GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Let us know what you think about the show, the interviews that we're having, the interviews coming up. If you have any questions for them, people you think we should be interviewing on the show. And of course, we're going to be leading up to the big uh, uh, Indie Mayhem Show episode episode 100 for our christmas edition and i think we're gonna have a very interesting and sexy group joining us in studio in the planning stages i hope to have more information for that uh soon for you guys and please if you're digging all the shows check out our patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and you can support via the main show on there or just tell a friend spread it around if you like an interview that happened here uh so amen who do we have this week uh, this week we've got a very special guest here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, I personally got to see him wrestle uh, twice now uh, for Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, making his way down to Texas. But uh, he has been tearing up the Midwest wrestling scene uh, for a little while now, but trying to break out. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, sort of his path in professional wrestling and the big stuff coming up for him soon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show this week, Everett Connors. Everett, how are you this evening? I'm good. How are you guys? Fantastic. Uh, very excited to have you on. Uh, definitely uh, want to get more, uh, get, get you, um, people to know more about who you are and, and where you sort of come from. And uh, I guess the best way to kind of start that up, start that off is with the, the question we tend to start with, which is uh, what's your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? Oh, um, that's a tough one. I think I think it was for some reason I I really remember um I don't know why this is with me or sticks with me but I remember when Shawn Michaels was out and he got hurt or something and then it was in 2007 and I think and uh he Randy Orton was like champion at the time and uh Vince McMahon, or they were doing some celebration for Randy Orton, and uh, Randy Randy Orton like hurt Triple H, or Triple H got hurt earlier in the night, and he was supposed to come out and shake Randy Orton's hand, or something like that. And uh, Shawn Michaels was out at this point out for quite a while, and uh, Randy Orton uh, or Triple H wasn't coming out, so Vince sends Randy Orton back, and as Randy Orton is going to the back. Shawn Michaels' music hit, and uh, he came out. And uh, I, I every time I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. It's for some reason just that uh, I remember. Awesome. And, and was that your first time sort of like getting into professional wrestling? Because uh, I, I mean, it seems like you're sort of a, a late bloomer in that case, I guess, in, in, in professional wrestling, it seems. Uh, no, I, I was watching it before, but I never really like it was real into it. Uh, I had a friend that was really into it. And whenever we would hang out, um, he would always be watching it. And, and so, uh, but I think, I, I guess you could say 
around that is when I really got into it and I, it really stuck with me. And I, I finally realized that this is what I really wanted to do. Cool. Uh, definitely. Uh, so going in from, uh, you know, watching wrestling to uh, training to become a wrestler, how did you find out that one that you could train to become a wrestler and, and uh, where did you first sort of uh, find out the place that, about the place that you started training? I found out from a friend uh, we were, we were in high school and we were talking about, you know, training and, uh, we were talking about like doing all these things and we were talking about going to Atlanta and like going to school there and then training there. Uh, there's some school in Atlanta that we were thinking about going to and of, um, so it was really because of a friend that got me, uh, into wrestling and then. There was a Broadway, South Broadway, is where I first started. And uh, I remember just going to one of their shows. And uh, it was the first, like, independent show I went to. And uh, I was just, I just loved it. And I talked to the head trainer there and and got into it there. So uh, South Broadway is the first, like, place I went to and trained with. And and going into the actual training like process, was there anything that you were kind of like uh, surprised by that you didn't expect? You know, uh, train to become a pro wrestler. Uh, 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 was there anything that kind of stuck out to you about the actual training? Um, geez, I'm sure there was. Uh, <laughs> I remember just so, like taking bumps, and I was just it, it every time I would do it. I was just asking myself why I wanted to do this because it hurt. And, like, uh, that's the only thing. Like, I didn't really expect it to be that bad, I guess. I thought it would be a lot easier. And um, that's the thing. It, it sucked. It sucked. The bumps were terrible. And at first, I wasn't – because you're not used to throwing your body on the ground. So uh, that that was just – that was brutal. Definitely. Definitely takes a, a, a lot of getting used to. Now, uh, I think the one thing that a lot of people know you for uh, uh, that, have, that have seen you perform, there was that uh, you actually did a bit of training under uh, former Ring of Honor world champion Michael Elgin. Uh, where did, where did uh, the, that training come about Like as far as like timeline-wise in your wrestling career? Um, uh, I was, I believe it was March of this year. I just, I, I started with him. And yeah, the guy is absolutely amazing. I mean, he is one of the smartest guys in wrestling. If not like it, that, I that I know one of the smartest guys in wrestling. Like he just has such a mind for it. And uh, yeah, I believe it was either March or April of of this year that I, I started with him. It sucks because I started with him late, but uh, he he's he's amazing. Definitely, and, and without I guess divulging too much. Any secrets, but is there anything like particularly about wrestling you sort of get from his training uh, uh, in particular? He, yeah, like he just gets your mind going for like with with how things should be set up. Um, he doesn't like every time. It, well, first of all, his class is absolutely like he loves to joke around in class, so it's definitely a lot easier. Um, but Definitely, like, setting up matches and whatnot is, is something that really sticks with me. When I first started, I had no clue, and I didn't – I was – it was terrible. But um, it was definitely with him. That, I think, is what sticks out the most with me. Definitely. Very cool. Now, you're wrestling a, a bunch of different places, uh, obviously, throughout the Midwest, and you've also gotten to come down to Texas a few times. Um of the people you sort of wrestled among the scene, is there anyone that kind of sticks out to you as as a talent that you've gotten in the ring with that have sort of helped you along the way, or or maybe uh, matches that you're particularly proud of? Oh man, um, I would. I guess I haven't really wrestled like a lot of big names like yet but like one I guess that would really stick out with me that that kind of helped me um is a guy that named Brandon Espinoza uh 
kind of wrestling him, uh, like he he's definitely someone that I try to because he's been wrestling for I think over a decade or something, and he was in OVW for a while or something, and um, yeah. he was actually the head trainer. At, he's the head trainer at South Broadway, but wrestling him, I guess you could say, is like the biggest name that I've wrestled thus far. Um, uh, matches with him, I guess you could say that that I'm I'm proud of. Or, or I have I've wrestled him quite a few times, but there's one I guess that, at Broadway. Uh, when I, it was like my second match, second or third match at Broadway, uh, that I wrestled in and it, we went like 15, 20 minutes and I did really well during that. So I guess that, that would probably be my favorite match so far, just because I knew then that I could at least be in the ring and, and wrestle that long. So I guess you could say that. Definitely. Very cool. Uh, and, and the other place uh, that I know that uh, you've been wrestling uh, uh, quite a bit now is also St. Louis Anarchy. And we've had uh, uh, Pierre Abernathy and, and a couple of different talents from that uh, promotion on our show before. Uh, and I definitely wanted to have you on to also talk about the events that are coming up this week, weekend for St. Louis Anarchy on the 13th and 14th uh, for their Ready to Rumble weekend. I know you've got some big matches on there as well. Uh, you've got a, a, a bit of a grudge match, I believe, with uh, – uh, a group that you're involved with uh, known as The Cause, um, as you guys are taking on uh, the Hooligans and the Viking War Party. Uh, for those that don't know, tell us a little bit about uh, The Cause and, and what you guys are doing down there in St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis Anarchy is amazing, first of all. Uh, if you have to go, if you want to go to an indie show anywhere, or in the Midwest, go to St. Louis Anarchy. Um, but The Cause is, we're a group that, just wants to bring rules and order to St. Louis Anarchy. And, uh, you know, it's myself, Evan Jalistico, uh, Adam Castor, and Danny Adams. And we are just four guys who just want the rules uh, there because it is, it, it used to be, you know, just no rules there. We want to enforce the rules and we want everybody else to enforce, enforce the rules. And uh, the hooligans and the Viking War Party are known for bras, brawls and uh, uh, chairs and whatnot. So uh, I'm excited for the match. I really am. I really like working with them. So I'm really excited. Awesome. Very cool. And then um, we talked about, you know, sort of big matches as well. you got a pretty big match also on uh, day two of that weekend because yeah. you're taking on a, a former TNA, well, former TNA X Division champion, current TNA star, and actually a, a friend of the Indie Mayhem show, uh, DJ Z. Uh, so, uh, how's that? Uh, how excited are you going into a matchup like that with somebody who you know has been on on TNA and 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 stuff like that as as you know DJ Z has? I'm really excited. I'm I'm ready for the task at hand, and uh, I'm really nervous though. Uh, but it, yeah, it is the like the first big name that I've wrestled, and and uh, I'm can't wait i've i've waited for this for so long just to get an opportunity to to wrestle someone with that big of a name and, and show that i can you know stay with them and uh but i i'm i'm so excited uh i i really can't wait i'm, I'm ready for it i've been ready for a long time awesome very cool and just to make sure everyone knows that uh, this uh 13th and 14th uh friday and saturday uh, in Old Illinois, so you can go go check out St. Louis Anarchy's Ready to Rumble event uh, this coming weekend to see Everett Connors uh, 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 twice in one weekend. Uh, going into sort of, uh, do you obviously uh, sort of you know making your way up in the wrestling scene now? Uh, do you have any future goals in mind uh, when it comes to uh, places you want to work or people you want to wrestle? Is there anything that you kind of uh, have set uh, currently? Yeah, uh, actually, there are quite a few guys that I want to wrestle. Um, places as places, just I mean, everywhere, you know, uh, just PWG. Obviously, that seems like an awesome place. Um, Evolve, just uh, but along with like for guys, I would love to wrestle Gary J. Um, I think he's absolutely amazing. He's one of the guys I look up to. Uh, Davey Vega is another guy that I think is awesome. Love to wrestle him. Um, they're quite uh, Matt Cage. 
Page, uh, Christian Rose, Matt Fitchett, Pierre, and Evan. Um, they're just th- – those guys really stick out in my head, uh, especially with Gary and, and Pierre and Evan. I kind of – you know, I would say that they, they have taught me so much as well. Um, I would say those – just those names I would really love to wrestle, along with other names like Johnny Gargano I think would be amazing. Um, Elgin, uh, Adam Cole, just guys like them shooting for the definitely. stars. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's the way to do it. Um, going to some of our uh, uh, general questions that we ask everyone here on the Indie Mayhem show, uh, one of the ones that we have is, uh, what are you watching currently when it comes to wrestling? Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, for recreation purposes or for studying purposes, is there anything that you kind of uh, currently have your eye on? Uh, I, rest, I watch a little bit of everything. I watch, you know, WWE, TNA. I do watch TNA. I think TNA is great, to be honest. Uh, I watch uh, a lot of indie shows. Uh, I love indie indie stuff, yes. Um, PWG. Um, there's some stuff in, in overseas that I like, but I guess mainly WWE is, is what I really kind of keep my eye on and watch. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and uh, the last question we kind of uh, sort of uh, like to ask our guests, and, and feel free to take it in any direction you wish because a lot of our guests take it in many different directions. Uh, but uh, we like to ask, uh, obviously being a show about indie wrestling, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, uh, I would say the best is the fans. The fans, uh, fans that really love indie wrestling um, they, they make it amazing. And also I think like the brotherhood of indie wrestling, you kind of come up together and, you know, you travel a lot with the same group. So, uh, you know, you gotta be close with a lot of the same people, you know, you're trying to be on the road every week. So you get to know a lot of good guys. Um, the worst, uh, I guess, I don't really know the worst. That's a tough one out. I guess, I don't know. I don't know about the worst. Just, <laughs> I, yeah, I really, I don't know. I, I don't really have anything for the worst. I'm sure there's, I'm, I know there's some stuff that's really bad, but I don't really have anything for the worst, to be honest. Well, someone say, I mean, someone say that would be a good attitude to have to, um, for indie wrestling, at least. Uh, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, it's, to look at it in that, in that kind of a light is always a, a good way to be, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Ever, for coming on and, and talking with us. Um, if you want to, uh, if people listening want to find you on social media or if they want to check you out at uh, an upcoming indie event that you're working, uh, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Everett Connors. And then, uh, I'm really St. Louis Anarchy is is big. Um, go follow them on Twitter at St. Louis Anarchy and you know like them on Facebook. Uh, I kind of want to stay there. Um, I, I there's not really like I go to Dynamo. They have some, but mainly mainly uh, St. Louis Anarchy is is the biggest one. Uh, you want to see a lot of good talent there too. A lot of good talent, and it's always fun. So check them out. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And we've definitely talked to a lot of guys from that, um, that promotion and I encourage many people to check it out. Cause it's, I would say one of the best in the Midwest currently, but, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I think, uh, <laughs> thank you very much Everett, for uh, joining us here on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, uh we'll definitely t- talk to you again soon. And right now we're going to take a quick look, uh, at everything that happened this past week in Silvertron media. We'll be right back. Do you remember when we were kids and we would ride our bikes on the sidewalk? I didn't have sidewalks when I grew up. Remember, remember, I, didn't remember, remember Stork, Stork I didn't have, have anything when I didn't have PBS. Yeah, this yeah, is, just, this is just between me and Chilla now. No oh, Mr. God, Rogers, no Canadian Mr. Rogers. No. Did you have Legos? Hey man, my Duplo game was on point. On that <laughs> oh my god, it's got a light bulb in it. Hot damn, that takes me back. Oh, that takes me back. 
Hillary Rodham Clinton's uh, presidential race. And um, you can just put different heads on that that same uh, form body. Um, and I would like to point out that uh, the devil is one of them. So <clears throat> I also didn't think they were going to use as many light tubes as they did. I just had like, you know, lawyers like looking at me the entire time. I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. Everything's cool. You know, a bunch of people came back to the to the control room, um, some, some investors in the show and executives. And they were like, that was amazing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're just going to explain concepts in our childhood that we experienced and just explain it to him and our perceptions of that. Just like, let's just explain to the youngin and you're like, what, like 12 years younger than me or something like that? Sorg, that, that actually could be a really good podcast. Please check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. We're having a lot of fun. And please, if you haven't yet, check out that awesome interview with Krista Joseph of Lucha Underground. Uh, we have, uh, let's see if I can get the name real quick. We have uh, uh, actually scheduled for next week. We're, we're, we're working on things uh, uh, the next few weeks. And um, we have scheduled for next week. Uh, we talked about several weeks ago on Wrestling Mayhem Show a RPG, a wrestling RPG. And uh, we are scheduled to talk with uh, um, the man behind a wrestling RPG that actually got through Kickstarter. So I'm looking forward to have that conversation. Well, so something outside the box. We haven't had one of those for a while. A wow. Right, Eamon? In a, in a wrong wow. A wrong wow. <laughs> wrong raggy. <laughs> my art. What, it was, something happened in my mouthpiece, and I don't know what it was. <laughs> something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I that's that's I'm very excited for that. Uh, I think that's the cool thing about the kind of show that when we started the show was to you know not just spotlight indie wrestlers or indie promotions, but just anything indie of any kind about pro wrestling, anything you know in that kind of realm. And yeah, this is, this definitely falls into it. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of I mean, uh, not everybody is cut out to be a wrestler, period. But there's a lot of people with a passion for what's going on here, and I think it's what we talk about here a lot. You and I. We weren't really cut out to be pro wrestlers, but I hope that we respect that as much as we can. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I, I think that uh, you know, and there's a space for that. We found a place with mm-hmm. our production side, or you're with the commentary, or with writing, or whatever the case may be. You know, our friends like Joe Dombrowski that that are doing everything around wrestling except being in the ring. And actually, you got to do that a couple of times too. You know, I I think that's really anything, cool. Anything that contributes to the scene, anything that exactly. contributes to the bigger picture. Exactly, exactly. Um, but anyways, you had a fun, fun, fun time this past weekend. Why don't you tell me about that? Fun, fun, fun time. Uh, I like how you uh, you segue that sort. And I wanted you to uh, remember yeah. me for the Mayhemi for in, for segue of the year. That's the, that's a great one. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, obviously I'm part of a little company called Inspire Pro Wrestling, and we did some fun stuff this weekend. Who? Uh, for fun, fun, fun fest. <laughs> Who? What? Who? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think anyone on this show has ever heard of them. No, no, <laughs> no, obviously not. But uh, no, we uh, we got to participate again this year. This is our second year of being a part of it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just that. It was fun. Uh, it was also a really great opportunity to... Um, get ourselves out there to the community, obviously. I think Austin, uh, Texas in particular, is a very much community-based kind of uh, city where it's all about, you know, events that are going on and, and, and supporting local uh, companies and businesses. And, and uh, that's what we tried to do this weekend and, and show them kind of what we're all about and give them some wrestling action to contribute to uh, uh, all the music that was going on. We were, uh, we, we, sh- we technically sh- uh, shared a, a a venue, I guess you could say, uh, on the same day uh, with uh, the likes of the Wu Tang Clan, which is that's kinda, right, yeah, open for the cool, Wu Tang. Kind, of cool, kind of a cool little thing to put on our uh, uh, checklist. Um, but it was fun, and um, festival shows are always interesting because uh, obviously it's much different than putting on an indie wrestling show because the, your audience is completely different. It's it's people who maybe vaguely know what wrestling is. It's maybe people who have never watched wrestling in their life. Um, but you kind of have to hook them in a sense. And, and the way a show 
is done, it has to be completely different. You know, it, it can't be the same thing. Uh, you have to sort of hook people, which is, uh, uh, I like to think what we did. Uh, we kind of uh, did a lot of fun, different stuff. Uh, a lot of involving, uh, we were, where we were positioned in, in the whole festival, which is down at uh, Auditorium Shores in Austin, Texas, which is a big park sort of area. Uh, we were right next to, uh, 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 you know, Luden's, the, the cough drop company. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, so they were one of the sponsors and they had this, um, <laughs> they had this, uh, I guess it's like a bounce house sort of setup nice. where you, you basically ride the two people basically ride these, uh, giant tonsils that are like, uh, like basically like kind of mechanical bull style, like things that try to like rock you off or whatever. Are you sure this wasn't an um, acid trip? I, I, well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there was a lot going around that. Answer weekend. unconfirmed. But, um, unconfirmed. Uh, but uh, Jojo Bravo and Beta Scott fought in it at one point. Uh, uh, we had Teddy Hart at our event do a moonsault off the top of it. Uh, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, just that kind of stuff. I think it's stuff people remember, and it and it hooks people. And and uh, yeah, I, we we. I mean, it was definitely fun for us, but we also definitely treated it as a way in which to get our company out there. I know we did a lot of uh, media interviews and stuff like that. Uh, Dallas Observer covered us, uh, which was really cool. Uh, Yeah, and it was a cool, you know, way to get Inspire Pro Wrestling out there. Awesome. So, I mean, that's that's kind of go ahead. I kind of want to get because I know you've been. I, I guess the closest thing that to similar to something you've been to involving wrestling and, and festivals would be the gathering. We, and we've talked about your, <laughs> we've talked about your experiences at the gathering on the show before. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what would you say about sort of that, you know, festival style, like professional wrestling? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, also, I don't think, uh, we, we I don't, this might have been before your time, Eamon, but my first mm-hmm. gig doing ringside camera was actually a weekend where actually the, where Shima Zion, uh, DJ Z that was mentioned earlier, won his first heavyweight title with IWC, his home promotion. Uh, it was a two-day mm-hmm. tournament, and and I know you you've heard us talk about the Steel City Con here in the area, right? It's a yep. to- it's a uh, formerly the toy and comic uh, convention, uh, but uh, w- there was a we had IWC there, and it was you know I think you did have to pay a little bit to go see that show as part of it. Or my, actually, no, it might have been actually included in, in admission, to be completely honest. Um, but they did that over the weekend. And again, it was like this big tournament, and they did it as part of this convention. And not everybody's there necessarily be re- to see wrestling, or maybe they came to the convention just to see the show, or whatever the case may be. So you have an interesting mix, and hopefully exposing it to new people, right? Um, and it had people like Loki was on the card, and, and, and guys that are big now, like Ray Rowe, um, the current, I believe the current referee for NXT, Drake Younger was part of it. You know, a, a lot of people, yep. a lot of people were a part of it. And, um, again, but then it was like, not that it wasn't that home vibe of having it at the court time sports center for IWC, you know? Um, and aside from that, I know I, I go through a lot of footage where prime wrestling, I think at the time they were PWO pro wrestling, Ohio. Um, and, they were at a, a wrestle, or a, a, not a wrestle. They called it Wrestle Rama, and it was at the it was at a car show, basically, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And they actually had the Wrestle Rama. That, that, that actually happens a lot in Texas, uh, at least South Texas. Uh, is car show wrestling? Car <laughs> show wrestling. <laughs> I know that's a big thing down here, especially in San Antonio. But um, but again, they made but, a yeah. thing. They had a, the Wrestle Rama trophy, and, and and they turned it into something uh, uh, special like that. It's always strange and awkward to me a little bit to do those kinds of shows. I understand kind of getting your name out there, and, and it seems like you guys do a pretty good job with it. I mean, that you you were doing the meter interviews. You guys were definitely, it sounds like, taking advantage of that. I, I also remember in the gathering, again, the gathering you're there for, not necessarily the wrestling, it's kind of a sideshow to the performances that are happening, much like with you guys. Probably more people were there to see the Wu-Tang Clan than they were to see Inspire Pro Wrestling. Right. I mean, right. I'm sure yeah. there was a handful of fans that were Inspire Wrestling fans that came to see you guys in this environment. Right. Um, but but there were, there were maybe like one or two kind of like people who I've seen at shows before and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of people, like I said, that are just coming in and, and 
see a wrestling ring and see guys beating each other up and say, oh, let me check that out. You know, mm. certainly. And I think and that's cool. And it's an exposure thing. Great. You know, uh, but when you look at something like The Gathering, there there's a commonality between the wrestling and the like you don't have the Wu-Tang Clan coming out and being a part of your wrestling. You do have the insane clown posse mm-hmm. coming out and being part of the wrestling. And then you vice versa, sure, you have the yeah. wrestlers coming out and throwing Fago during the last uh, uh, part of ICP set on, on, on the last night. Right. So yeah. it works, you know, it really works for that. It, it, it's all part of the package. You know, if you were some kind of weird wrestling rock crossover thing, then, then that's kind of more what you probably attribute it to. Um, I had another sample from this. But also just weird environments like um, they did a, a, a CD release tour for an ICP album and they had their wrestling there set up in the event where I saw ICP last week actually at Mr. Small's Theater. It's a small venue. You can barely fit a ring in there and have people around it. Barely. Okay. And, yeah. and they had wrestling and then they had a few of their lower level performers come out and, and, and perform on the stage and in the ring during it. So a really interesting crossover there. So I don't know. It's um, and of course we've had the the, the carnival with the infamous bike Pinky Sanchez bike incidents, um, yes. the, of a few weeks ago on around the uh, Indies. So I don't know. It's uh, it, it's interesting, and I don't, and hopefully it exposes new people to it, and you guys do see some of those faces return. You never know. Oh, Warp mm-hmm. Tour one year about two thousand one two thousand two. Um, I think they called it Nacho Libre Wrestling or something crazy like that. And I remember it was goofy Lucha Libre Wrestling with goofy characters, like almost along the lines of what you would know now as Chikara. Um, and they handed mm-hmm. everybody tortillas to throw at the wrestlers. <laughs> that was something different. Awesome. And that war tour, a punk I, tour. I, 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 think, uh, I think also Interspecies Wrestling does the, uh, the war tour uh, nowadays when they go to uh, Canada. That makes sense. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, uh, like you said, I think you hope to reach people that, you know, will decide that this is cool enough that they would want to spend money on, a, on an actual show and an attended live. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's definitely the goal every year. You know, uh, I, I mean, we've been doing this for two years and hopefully uh, we're hoping to be back uh, again next year because uh, it's definitely a really great time uh, being a part of Fun 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 Fest. Mm-hmm. So. If nothing else, it, it, hopefully it's a payday and everything for uh, depending on the, how how they're worked in. If they're on Warp Tour, I feel like they're more of a sideshow than yeah. to promote something, right? And I think I think a little bit more of you know JCW is kind of the same thing, where it's part of the package, not to promote. Hey guys, make sure you check out JCW after this, you know, because they really don't have yeah. that big of a footprint to do something uh, these nowadays. Um, it's kind of an on again, off again wrestling promotion, to be quite honest. So it's interesting. Yeah. Well, I had an experience. I had RWA's open season uh, this past weekend, and uh, it was a good time. It, it was, uh, again, one of those, and we talked about this a lot before, um, a lot of kind of storyline progression, and you have, you know, this is something that's very baked in, and and, and this is a, these, these are people, like, have the, most of the people in the crowd have been going for years, let's be honest. Um, so there's yeah. a lot of development, there's a lot of payoff, there's a lot of, uh, the bad guys kind of won over a little bit uh, on this night, you know, it's like an episode of Raw more than anything because <laughs> there's this just a storyline and screw overs and it goes and it builds and it builds and it feels like it feels like rwa is is a series of raw episodes <laughs> you know and then once in a while we do get our okay. but but it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing at all no, but no, no. obviously they I can't what you're saying yeah yeah um and it's it's very interesting but really good matches that anybody that's not invested in um what they're doing there uh there locally and again once again the crowd is always chanting our good friend, Bert LeGrand. I love we were going into intermission. <laughs> and he says, and now we're going to intermission, but first, Sweeper Guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, have I talked about Sweeper Guy on here? How, I think we have. How I, Sweep, I the guy, because I, I don't know, do you guys have, I, forget, I might have asked this before, do you guys have like people popping the confetti that it gets in the ring? Like, it's horrible. We, up we here. have a lot of, we have a lot of streamer stuff. Screamers, but these are like the tubes, and they 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 pull on them and they pop and and shoot up and and, and they throw confetti at you. 
and it just gets messed. Finally, they've been sweeping the last couple months, which is good because I, I think I was worried about them getting kind of dangerous uh, with those things. And there's a guy that does it. And everybody starts chanting, sweep, 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 to the point where <laughs> then the guy had a shirt made that says sweep, sweep, sweep on the back. And I don't know if you might have seen the pictures. Chachi and I went and grabbed the broom and got pictures with him the one night. We've turned him into a local meme. He is a celebrity amongst the uh, uh-huh. regular 200 people in attendance of RWA. <laughs> and it is nice. a beautiful, magical thing that's happening in this shitty gymnasium in, <laughs> in West Newton, PA. <laughs> I mean, I think they'll admit that, too. It is a shitty gymnasium, but that's part of the charm. It is the ECW arena of of, of Nowheresville, Pennsylvania, and, and I think it's, it's pretty amazing. And I see Wheels is hanging out on the hangout. He's nodding. <laughs> He's nodding to me uh, right now, um, but no, it is. It really is. I think it's it's, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, I, I I can't I can't really promote it outside of that. You know, for check out the DVDs uh, and the digital downloads and uh, as usual. And it, it was a fun fun fest fest. Fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a fun fun fest fest. Um, <laughs> Best of fun, fun. Best of fun, best of fun, fun, fun. Are you, is that available for anybody to watch? You, did you guys record it or anything or um, something we, along those lines? We did, and we're actually we're actually going to be releasing uh, the matches from that uh, weekend on on our YouTube channel for free. Uh, cool. We did that cool. last year, and and it definitely was a uh, big success for us in that realm. So yeah, definitely. Cool. Go oh, uh, go check that out. Um, let's take around the Indies. Let's see what Amon got or not. Or, 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 I'm sorry, Matt Carlin got for us to, to, to the day on the uh the weekend um first of all uh <laughs> we were kind of playing some videos earlier about uh, uh stuff going on uh evolve had a lot going on apparently um this is uh, I, I don't know i lost i lost my spot here <laughs> oh, no. i do know oh, no, they, they, they're their, uh, 51 and 52 events uh uh obviously we talked a lot uh, uh i believe last month about the uh, recent relationship with Evolve and WWE. Uh, uh, interesting to see how that will play out uh, going forward. But I mean, Evolve seems to be doing some really good stuff lately, uh, particularly with their champion, Timothy Thatcher, uh, who is, is doing some really great stuff. Um, yeah, and, and it seems like an all-around really cool uh, uh, card for Evolve uh, from this past weekend in Florida. Um, uh, there's also Rockstar Pro Wrestling, uh, which, uh, 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 let's see, from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, the arena event was a 60-minute Iron Man match between uh, Dave Chris and, and David Starr, which apparently uh, actually went an hour and 44 minutes. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, which apparently is, a, I believe, a record. Uh, it is saying it is a record for a longest one-on-one singles match in, in North America. Uh, wow. Which is very cool. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Now, we've had, you know, I actually uh, uh, ran into Facade uh, at a concert last week, and I ended up BSing with him over like the first two sets of of the of the show, and didn't even get into the venue. Uh, but but talking about like Rockstar, and of course we had uh, Larusso on talking about Rockstar a few weeks ago on a Wrestling Mayhem show. They're doing some crazy stuff. They're doing like a weekly show, like like yeah. And, and I think they're filming for TV, and they're doing just nutty stuff over there. And it's awesome to see. Um, and, and yet, there's nothing going on other than AIW in Cleveland, apparently. And uh, and it's all in, like, middle of Ohio, it seems. Um, so, and old Definitely. wrestling happened, too. And I don't know if that's in here. But crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I don't even know, man. Uh, but that's, that's great. Uh, I, I, I was going to say, also, I believe the next night uh, in Dayton, uh, Combat Zone Wrestling also had their Cerebral event. Uh, which uh, saw uh, Dave's, Dave Chris's brother, Jake Chris, have his retirement match uh, nice. against Devin Moore. Uh, nice. So definitely very cool for him, obviously being an Ohio uh, uh, native, uh, uh, you know, big thing for him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Smash Wrestling held their third, uh, third anniversary event in Toronto. Uh, Smash Wrestling is a really great group out there in Canada doing some really fun stuff. Uh, which saw uh, two tag partners from uh, from AAA, and and you may know them from Lucha Underground as well, Uh, and Helico defeating Jack Evans uh, in their main event, which, uh, I mean, those two names, obviously, uh, really great stuff there. Uh, Let's see. AAW. I believe I... 
Yeah, definitely AAW uh, having an event as well this past weekend. Uh, I believe there was also something I believe that was alluded to on the uh, uh, Wrestle Mayhem show before we uh, I went off, which was from Dreamwave Wrestling, uh, which had their Survival of the Fittest event. Uh, they uh, got a little bit of social media buzz, I guess you could say, uh, uh, from a couple of events ago where they uh, brought in uh, Zara Schreiber, who, uh, for those that don't know, is the uh, the girlfriend of uh, Seth Rollins, uh, who was uh, fired from WWE developmental after oh, some, for uh, some kind of Nazi uh, thing. I I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but she uh, competed uh, in a, in a uh, I believe a five on five tag. Uh, on that event, and uh, 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 even broke out the curb stomp. <laughs> uh, hey, I mean, you know, gotta get that out. There. I mean, you know, I, I, I would say this. I mean, it seems like they got, you know, she was getting a lot of social media buzz, obviously. So I think Dreamwave's goal, Dreamwave's goal was to uh, capitalize on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, we talked about how that's sort of a big thing, you know, in, in uh you know, wrestling now, wrestling is especially on the indie levels to capitalize and stuff like that. So, hey, um, we also, I mean, RWA is also in here that we mentioned. You mentioned old wrestling. Uh, held, held their Bonanza Body Slams event, uh, which I love that name. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to figure really out this stuff. vine right now. I, I Just a guy falling and, and bouncing, and it's, I can't stop watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Old Wrestling is definitely one of my favorites as far as the companies that are mm-hmm. doing something different. So, um, Darren yeah, De Niro definitely. debuted for them. Did he really? Yeah, as like a tennis playing debutante. I forget what his name was. Um, but <laughs> but go go look at Darren De Niro's Facebook page. He's got a picture of it. And it is freaking fantastic. Um, and, and there's always, anytime they have an old wrestling, of old day wrestling event, um also keep an eye on gregory irons instagram facebook everything there will just be absolutely ridiculous photos like not just like old wrestling themed photos like you'll have but also just like i don't know there there's a really good group of guys and girls involved in that and there's just probably the most fun they have in indie wrestling and and you can tell that everybody's <laughs> all in for that and 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 doing and just just being amazing in, in in that fashion um this is a passion project for these guys i feel and i think it's 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 really Definitely. really great so awesome awesome great stuff and even some footage in here uh is this wait 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 is this i didn't realize there's footage in here of the thing you were trying to define in our in our talk oh, yes. earlier of the lozenge crazy bouncy house thing that <laughs> look yes, at that you can see, the, you can see- you can see those two, uh, uh, th- uh, I believe, tonsils, I guess is the best way to put that. That was crazy and some uh, yeah, great pictures. And, and just, definitely, yeah. Uh, it, it, like I said, definitely some different stuff that we've Wow. Done, wow. Cool. That's a, um, I love that under the under the, 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 the kind of clouds of the sky. That looks really, really cool. Yeah, That's definitely great. competing over. I, I think that the greatest setting is definitely uh, in downtown Austin. Like, mm-hmm. like right over the skyline of, of buildings and stuff like that. It's real cool. That is amazing. All right. Well, I think that's all the indie wrestling fit to discuss today. Thank you so much, Eamon Payton. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, my friend from across the nation. Uh, thank you so much for doing the show with us once again, leading up to our big thank you for having me, sir. Indie Mayhem Show 100. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Um, and it may be unintelligible, but that's okay. I'm hoping I can share bowling tips with our one guest. Mm-hmm. But anyways, aim and pain and aim and two please on the Twitter. Check out inspireprowrestling.com, Inspire Pro Res on the social medias. I'm at Sorgatron, wrestling show.com, indie wrestling.us, and all kinds of other things going on at sorgatronmedia.com and sidekickmediaservices.com. We'll see you guys next time. Support indie wrestling. Oh. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.